to Granny's place. Take the time and space to give yourself a break. Here you'll find some love, music, laughter, and above all, she'll dare to tell the truth. And so come to Granny's place. Welcome to Granny's Place, a haven for love, entertainment, and uncommon sense. I'm Sweet Baby James, and I'm here to introduce you to Granny Rocks and to today's ongoing theme, You Ask the Questions, Granny Provides the Answers. So first, introduce Granny once again. Her another name for her is Beth Green, and she's an intuitively guided counselor having 38 years of experience. She's been a longtime social activist and is the author of six books, about human behavior. She has unusual insights into our issues, personal and social, as well as a special warmth, which helps us to look more honestly at ourselves. Plus, whatever the question, Granny uses music and humor to deliver a message that has universal applicability and addresses the heart of the matter. So even if you haven't submitted a question for this given show, you may very well discover Granny's comments to other viewers answer questions you don't even know you have. Be aware that Granny answers all questions in the order she receives them. So please get in your question as soon as possible. And so now, here's Granny. Ah, <laughs> let's all just take a deep breath. Ah, I sure ah. need one. Yeah, I could use one. Why is it that every time we go to do this show, something crazy happens, right? Oh, really? Like today, Sweet Baby James, he prints out the questions, right? The printer wouldn't work, and then it had to do with the network, and then the internet didn't work, and then I got the internet working, and the printer still didn't work, and blah, 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 blah. we got up here, and we just, we we're ad-libbing, you know, we're making do as usual. There's always something. Yes. So anyway, it's... It's always something. It, it, as I say, if it's not one thing, it's ten. <laughs> so, anyway, welcome to Granny's Place. First of all, I'd like to make sure that you are sending me in your questions. Um, if you want to know how to send in a question, you go to the post where you found this video, and like in the first line, it says, submit your questions, and you click on something, and it takes you to some software program, and you write in your question. You can do it anonymously. You can give me your name. So get your questions in, because I do answer them in the order in which I receive them. Okay. So, Here we go. Ready right. for the first question? I never know. By the way, I said I would answer the question, but I didn't say that I'd answer that, the question in a way that you would like. <laughs> So beware. So often the buyer unexpected. Buyer beware. Buyer beware. Buyer beware. <laughs> you get what you pay for. What can I say? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Always an unexpected perspective. Always. From Granny. The uncommon sense. An often undesired perspective. <laughs> okay. Here's the first question. I'm a recovering alcohol. I'm not alcoholic. Catholic. Oh. <laughs> I'm a recovering Catholic. How do I let go of the judgments? I have about family members who pick and choose what they follow concerning church rules, but attempt to thrust all the church rules upon me. Well, I assume they're only thrusting upon you the church rules that they're following, that they don't thrust upon you the church rules no, that they're ignoring. she said all the church rules. Well, see, now rules. that, does, is that really true, or are they only <laughs> thrusting upon you <laughs> the church rules that they are at least looking like they're following, right? Mm -hmm. Well... I think it's pretty funny. I think the issue here is really about uh, judgment in general. You know, mm -hmm. this is, you're living in a judgmental world, evidently. They're judging you, you are judging them. And so, the, the, you know, to begin with, we need to observe that, that that is a judgmental universe that yeah. you're living in, gir girl, guy, whoever you are. Yeah. And uh, so why is this person susceptible to judgments? Well, judge. you know, it probably because they grew up in a... I mean, this is all... Are they all family members? Did, yeah, uh, uh, 
Did he or she? Family and friends. Family and friends. Well, friends you can get rid of, right? Well, family you can get rid of too. But what I'm saying is, you know, if people are judgmental and these are your friends and、uh, you're uncomfortable、oh, with them. Oh, I, I apologize. She just said family. Family. Okay, I didn't think so. I thought, you know, friends.、Oh, yeah, friends don't do that to you. Okay, so it's family. Okay. <laughs> they just judge quietly. So you grew up with these people, and if they are judgmental, or if they feel judged, if they feel bad about themselves because they grew up in a judgmental universe, which is very much part of the Catholic religion, is a lot of judgment. A lot of ju- a lot of religions are like this, not just Catholicism. So, so they're judgmental. Uh, the church judges you and then forgives you, but you know it comes with a whole bunch of judgment and shame and self-hatred and you know cruelty to yourself and to everybody else. So you grow up with that, and then you live in a judgmental world. I mean, it's not just the church. Right. So what happens is, of course, you just get into a habit. The habit、mm-hmm. is judging, and it's a defense.、Mm. Judgment is a defense. Judge first before you're judged. Well, it's really judge after because you're already being、oh, judged. I mean, you know, right, it's not right, like right. it's all. Or I would say judge、right. simultaneously. Now you did it too. It, well, it's you know, <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. What's what we see is that, you know, you go in, you're feeling judgmental. They're going in, they're feeling judgmental. You're judging them, they're judging you, and it is. It's like a defense mechanism against feeling bad. Because when we feel judged. Oh my God! We feel so ashamed. When we feel ashamed, we just want to die, right?、Mm-hmm. Now, I wrote a book called Living with Reality. It is、mm-hmm. sitting over there, but it's not only、right. sitting over there. It is on the internet at theinnerrevolution.org, our community. Okay, and that book, the first introduction.、Mm-hmm. Um, or the pref, I think it's the introduction. Anyway, is all it talks about ego, instinct, and evolution. Yes. And in it, I really talk about how difficult it is. You know, you're an infant; you're not going to be able to survive on your own. So people have to want to take care of you, right? So if somebody makes you feel like you're inherently bad, that might make you feel like no one's going to take care of you. And so, guess what? Shame makes you. Feel like you're going to die because you're afraid that you're going to be thrown out of the tribe. You know, okay, your tribe is Catholic, so they're going to throw you out, and so then the next time there's a tsunami hits your apartment in Beverly Hills, you know, what? Can, <laughs>、uh, you're in trouble because where's the family or where's the friends? But、uh, all joking aside, we grow up in these little tribes called families, and if we are not taken care of there, who's going to take care of us? Because we do not live in a universe that takes care of us. We have to rely on friends, family, charity, and so on. So coming back to that issue, and I really wish you would read that、uh, introduction. It's only thirty-six pages yeah, of introduction. Read, right. Forget the rest of the book. Don't forget the rest <laughs> of the book. But if you have to, read that. Section on ego, instinct, and evolution because it really helps explain the ego, and it helps us to understand why shame is such a horrible feeling, right? So, when you grow up in a culture that is very shaming, it very easily triggers your survival fears. It's like, oh my God, God is going to put me in hell.、Uh, you know, I'm going to be thrown out of the tribe. Um, I'm not going to get, you know, the, the Santa isn't going to bring me a gift, isn't it? Don't we even have a song? Da 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 da. You better watch out. You better watch out. You better, better not, not cry. cry. Santa not Claus、I'm、is coming. Poor town. And he knows what you've been he doing. He knows what you've been doing. I mean, look at that. <laughs> right. Da 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 da. So, so anyway. So you better be good. So you better be good. See. Because if you're not good now, if you're gonna be bad in this culture, you gotta be really bad. So everybody's afraid of you. So you don't have to be afraid of them. <laughs> See, so that's it. You know, you either oppress other people or you're in danger of being, you know, wiped out, splat. So, so now going back to the judgment. So if you grow up and there's a lot of judgment and that brings up shame, which is the fear that you're not going to be okay, you're not going to survive, or you're even just going to be socially ostracized, 
So you carry that fear of judgment everywhere that you go. And so they're judging you and you feel it. And so you defend yourself by saying, well, I don't have to listen to them because they're no good. They're not doing it either. They're, you know, they're also going to go to hell or nobody is going to hell. That's all silly. Or they're not. Okay. So in my estimation, you see, you know, I've said this many ways on many days and I will continue to say it in many ways on many days as long as I'm still alive talking which is that if you don't change everything, you can't change anything, right? So if we were in a society that where we didn't feel so scared, we didn't go into shame, where we weren't brought up by judgmental people, we wouldn't be judgmental to start with. You wouldn't be afraid of other people's judgments. You kind of just would relax. Now, have you ever noticed, whoever you are, that when you're with people who are not judgmental, you tend to be better. So that just shows you that judgment is a defense. So once you understand that, the best thing to do is to work for a society where people aren't judgmental and where people are more supportive. So that would be my recommendation. Get on the stick and try to make a better society. In the meantime, look at everybody in your family who you think is judging you and instead of judging them ask yourself is there an alternative and there is it's called compassion you know what you could do is you could look at each person who you think is judging you and maybe they don't even have time to judge you because they're too busy judging themselves or something else <laughs> you know you, you may even just only think that they're judging you and that's enough but look at each one of those people and say I wonder what they're judging themselves about what kind of pain they're in and suddenly you have compassion for them and that's how you deal with it mm -hmm. wonderful and just parenthetically since you're a recovering catholic you may not believe that you're going to go to hell or they're going to go to hell or anything like that but what's just been said here is from the earliest infancy you yeah. really feel like your survival depends on having your needs met and if you're judged negatively you be thrown out of the tribe. You're out of the tribe. Right. Yeah. You won't make it. Right. So there we are. Okay. Okay, then. On to question number <laughs> two. Which has just disappeared yeah. from the screen. Just disappeared from the screen. Because, as we told you, the printer wasn't working. So we got the laptop on, and now there it is. Ah, oh, miracle of miracle. Yes, magic. <laughs> this is from Anonymous. I moved to another state and let my kids live with their dad so that I could pursue a relationship that promised to be loving and supportive. Once I moved to the new state, the other person withdrew immediately. I was shocked and hurt. I know that I need to be looking at why else I was drawn to move away. And what am I supposed to be doing now? But I keep getting drawn back into being angry and hurt at the other person. He doesn't take any accountability for my decision to move and then withdrawing. Should I just ignore him now and move on with my own life? Do you have a choice? Unless this person has transformed dramatically since the time that you sent in that question, which wasn't that long ago, you don't have much choice. You said husband and children, so I'm assuming that you are a woman. Well, I have been fooled many times, but I'm not so much fooled by the other person as I'm fooled by myself, right? It's like, I believe, I want to believe that they are who they're pretending to be or that I'm pretending that they are. And usually, and this is the worst part of it, I have a sneaking suspicion underneath it all that this is not quite the way it looks, but I don't want to know that because I want to escape from something that is untenable. Now, you are doing fantastically, girl, that you are asking yourself the questions is, why did you do that, right? Now, could you go over that part of the question again? Uh, why am I drawn? Why was uh, I drawn Yeah, why away? did I do it? And why uh, am I stuck in feeling angry? No, no, hurt could you angry? go back and ask the question uh, again about the, uh, I'm asking, I'm trying to explore why I was drawn away to do this, why I was drawn to do this? Uh, on the hunt for the question. 
Well, it was just, she just says, I simply so I could pursue a relationship no, that promised to be loving she and supportive. Said, she goes on to say that mm -hmm. she's looking at this question. Um, I know that I need to be looking at why else I was drawn to move away. Exactly. Why else That's was I drawn to move so away? So that is, I compliment you. That is exactly the question you should be looking at. Yeah, like, there you, go. you know, was it that there was something out there? Though there was something at home that you were trying to avoid. Now, maybe it was an abusive person. Maybe it was just a bad match. Maybe it's shame that you have. Maybe it's your own addiction. Who knows what it was? I, I don't know what it was, but because um, I don't know enough about you. Uh, maybe you just didn't want to have children to start with and you felt like you had to and then you had all these responsibilities or maybe you thought you wanted them until you found out what it was like or who knows but it's fabulous fabulous that you are looking within and saying why did I go and why did I want to believe this was true so I feel this you know this is a very upsetting thing that you've gone through I'm not saying it isn't and I have been fooled myself in relationships where I wanted to believe somebody and they even told me things that I should have known better right but I wanted to believe right yeah so I have compassion for you you should have compassion for yourself but if you take a look at that question because I noticed that you didn't say I want to go back to my husband and children right so I think that's kind of interesting isn't it yeah yeah you know that's a clue that is a clue you know you don't want to go back to your husband you know why you don't want to go back to your children why and can you make peace with those decisions were they the right decisions for you and you know we believe in doing what is for the highest good not what is considered to be the socially acceptable thing so if for example you were having trouble handling having kids handling on an emotional level or on a physical level maybe they are better off but you can still if you don't feel ashamed you can stay in touch you can be a parent you can be on skype you know you can get involved with your children you're going to have to deal with their upset about you leaving and all that or maybe you should go back to them i'm not saying you should but once you understand what was going on you have to be able to come to peace with either correcting that decision or accepting that decision and when you accept that, then you begin to look at this as just the next step of your life. You move to another state. Is there something for you there that you didn't have where you were? Is there something that drew you there rather than pushed you out from where you were? Are you in a more, okay, you're really gay and you were living in a place that was very repressive to gays and you had to hide it where you were and now you can come out. I, I'm not, you understand what I'm saying? There could be something about where you are now or where you could go now that is actually more nurturing for you. So this becomes an invitation to you for you to actually look at your own needs, ask yourself what has been the basis of the decisions that I've made before? You know, why, what, what is, wh why have I decided to do the things that I did? Mm -hmm. Were they the right reasons? Were they healthy or was I just conforming? Was I trying to please my mother? Was I scared to live my own life? All those kind of things, right? We get to ask all those questions. Yeah. And now that I've taken a break from that, where am I? What do I need? And what is for the highest good of all? Which would include your husband, your kids, and so on. And the highest good doesn't necessarily mean doing what is conventional it may be better for you to be where you are but you then do it with a sense of love and a clear mind and a clear conscience when you are absolutely clear that this is really you know if you're staying in a relationship that's terrible it isn't good for the children either right so there it may be for the highest good of your kids for you not to be there or maybe it it isn't so the highest good doesn't mean what is convenient or what is 
considered acceptable by everybody. It's like you go into a higher state of consciousness mm -hmm. and you look at things from a higher perspective. Mm -hmm. And what is for the highest good of my children? Is it better for them not to be living with a lot of dissonance between the parents? Uh, are they happy with my husband? Is Do they need to be with me? Is there an option to just live nearby and uh, is, have uh, shared custody? Exactly. That sort of thing? Exactly. So what is for the highest good of everybody? Your husband's highest good, your highest good, the children's highest good. And what is that highest good? It's that thing that will really nurture their souls. Yeah. Not necessarily mm. please them mm. on the superficial level but will really help them to grow. And what can you do to help your kids to develop the self-love that they're going to need because their mother left? You see, they're going to need your support. If you don't have that self-love, and it's hard for you to teach it to them, every child whose mother leaves has some feeling deep inside them that there was something wrong with them. So even if it is better for you to stay where you are or to go somewhere else, as you develop insight and the willingness to look at yourself, you can go to your kids and give them the support they need to understand what's going on Yeah. and to develop their self-love in the midst of all of this. So going on with your life is not like Okay, that's it. It means introspection, self-realization, understanding, cleaning up whatever mess you've made unconsciously, making a conscious decision about what's for the highest good, and having the courage to go forward and do it. Because you're absolutely right. If you just sit there angry and railing at this guy, you're getting nothing done. You aren't healing yourself, you aren't healing your kids, and you're not helping your husband. So, good luck with that. Tough one. Okay, very good. Wonderful. Uh, next we have uh, from Anonymous, another Anonymous. I listened to your answer, this was last week, about dealing with the food addiction and just living from the inside instead of trying to reconcile inner identity with outer beauty. However, I don't think you understand what it is like to be fat every day or to have an addiction that you can't just quit or get services for because people don't understand that it's not just a laziness or a gluttony. And because there are so few truly supportive resources, support resources for food addiction compared to other addictions. Well, first of all, I want to say good for you that you wrote back and indicated that you were not happy with my answer. I applaud you for that. You know, that's a very good thing. It takes courage although you are anonymous and I'm not but still <laughs> you know so I like that you said that but now I really want to take a look at what you said yes you are right I do not know what it's like to be fat every day but you might not know what it's like to gamble away your family's fortunes and, and put them in the homeless shelter and you may not know what it's like to be an alcoholic and drink yourself under the bridge and get cirrhosis of the liver and or have a DUI while you've killed somebody that you have to live with that guilt every day I mean there are so many things that I don't experience directly but I do understand what shame is and embarrassment and I do understand what addiction is because I have overeaten food and more than that I've been an alcoholic a practicing alcoholic um, and uh, cigarettes. Oh, and I've smoked cigarettes, and I had to quit both of them, and I've got, you know, what, like 38 years of sobriety now, but it weren't easy. And you quit them both simultaneously. I did. And the thing is, so I, I don't under, I can't say that I've ever been in your moccasins, but you have never been in mine. See, I've had to live with something else. I've been chronically ill since I'm 15 years old, and that means... I've spent years in my house, years in bed, not being able to do anything. When I meet a guy, you know, I would, how would I ever meet a guy, right? I'm never out. So I would, you know, use uh, 
the internet dating services and on the first I mean to me maybe James will tell you on the very first phone call I had to tell him uh, I'm in bed most of the time I'm sick all the time I can't cook I can't clean I can't do dishes uh, oh and I saved till our first date that I couldn't have sex you know I mean you know th there's no <laughs> <laughs> yeah and 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 my disabilities are pretty darn visible as well so yes I get I mean and it's horrible fat shaming is a hideous thing that goes on in our society and I'm not sh shaming you for being fat I didn't say anything about that what I said to you is if you have an eating addiction you have to deal with it see I can't go out there in the world and make everybody out there feel okay about fat you know right. I have tried I have tried it's like you know to me the most important thing obviously because I'm ill all the time pretty much um, I wake up for the show and then I fall asleep again um, <laughs> so uh, you know I can't I, uh, to me, the important thing is your, are, is your health. You know, are you healthy? If you're fat, who cares? I mean, I don't care. I only care is two things, I should say. Are you healthy? W what's happening with your health, with the eating, the compulsive eating, and being in the grip of any addiction is a horrible thing. You don't feel like you have any power over yourself or your life. So that's why I said to you, whatever, you know, yes, you can't really reconcile your inside with your outside what you can do is live from the inside and not pay attention to everybody's judgments into what you know what why are you even thinking about what they're thinking you know you really need to be looking at why is that important to you that they're thinking this or they're thinking that or you know that they see you in a particular way just go out there and be yourself yeah. but the other thing i did yeah. say yeah and what about the resources is support. dealing with your addiction well there are some you know there's not none. There are some. There First are. of all, you could be in therapy, which I hope you already are, and you're trying to get to what started the pattern of compulsive eating, if, the, if you're suffering from that, and try to, you know, I do counseling. Many people do counseling. You can find out about me if you go to the innerrevolution.org website and you go to our community, what we do, and under counseling, you'll see something called private time with Beth, and you can book a session. But you can get counseling from anybody. I'm not saying you should do it with me. And, uh, you know, are you already doing that? And are you dealing with what could be driving this, the addiction part? Because, you know, food is addictive in it itself. So once you're in the emotional eating, I know for me, I mean, I'm not fat, but I have had fat periods. But I know what it's like to eat one chip and never stop or have a little bit of sugar and, and and it's over you know i just can't stop i know what food addiction is like it's this this never-ending compulsion i do a lot of anxiety eating i hate it and it hurts me you know my body doesn't like it so i always have to look at what is going on with me about why am i eating compulsively what is the emotional component you know so there is that and there are organizations i don't know if you've looked at them you've tried them uh, if there are any resources online, uh, there's Food Addicts Recovery Anonymous, I think it's called now. Well, and there's also Overeaters Anonymous, well, which you mentioned last right, time. Right, but I don't know if Overeaters Anonymous still exists, but it's, it may. I don't well, really here's know. Here's something else I'd like to add. What? If you can't find these resources in your area locally, yeah. go online. Yes. Uh, you know, there all of these things, all of these support groups are also available online. Yes. Yes. So you, know, you can participate by video conference. Exactly. You know, there is nothing that is going to substitute for you taking this on. See, nobody is going to change the world for you. Nobody is going to stop other people from having judgments. So what you need to be looking at is what judgments do you have about you being fat? Mm -hmm. Where did those judgments come from? Mm -hmm. How can you work through those judgments how can you find the help you need to deal with your addictiveness even if you don't lose weight you begin to feel like you have some power in your life and start thinking about the people around you instead of worrying about what they're thinking about you 
You know, it's like, oh, and so is so and so having a tough day? You know, they're probably not even sitting there thinking about you. They're probably thinking about themselves because people are always thinking about themselves and you think they're thinking about you. I am not kidding. That is the way the world is. Now, they may have a passing thought. It's like, oh, she's so fat. But I'm going to tell you one more little secret. Yeah. If you have a thought about yourself like, oh, I'm fat. Everybody's going to think I'm fat. People will pick that up and start thinking she is fat. The person who isn't thinking they're fat, I would guarantee you, and I'm telling you this because I'm an intuitive and I can feel these things. If I'm looking at somebody and suddenly the thought comes to me, oh my God, they're so fat. Guess what? That's their thought. I know that from experience, from actually counseling. And people who aren't thinking that way, I don't think that. The minute someone's feeling good about themselves, I feel good about them. When they feel lousy about themselves, I've picked that up and I am going to reflect back to them what they're thinking. So if, for instance, if you think you're weak, everybody around you is going to think you're weak. It's just yeah. a weird thing. So I've given you a lot of suggestions. Evidently, you like, don't like them. But this is the best I can do. Good luck. <laughs> well, maybe one of those suggestions will be helpful to you. We hope so. I hope so. And time is up. And time is up. So don't forget to come to Granny's Kitchen, which is 15 minutes after the live show. And the instructions on how to get to Granny's Kitchen are in the same post mm -hmm. that also has the... This is where I send the question to Granny Rocks. And... Um, you can also watch the archives of Granny's Kitchen on our YouTube channel, Granny Rocks TV, YouTube. Mm -hmm. And this video is going to be on Granny Rocks TV on YouTube, and it's going to be on uh, the, our Granny Facebook. Rocks t Facebook mm -hmm. page, and mm -hmm. in fact, the innerrevolution.org Facebook page as well. So I hope mm -hmm. I have messed with your day. And I just want to add one more thing. If what? you do come to Granny's Kitchen, you'll have the chance to interact directly with Granny yes. because she'll be guiding the discussion. I do. I do guide that. And I would love that. I love to interact with people. We're having some fabulous people coming on to Granny's Kitchen. So I love that. So come on. So you can get the support. That yeah. you may or may not want. <laughs> come on down. So goodbye for now. Bye-bye.